Welcome back to Switch to Linux. Well, today we're going to have a brief look at GNOME 45, which I was prepared to show you GNOME 45 beta, but I checked the news and as of today, it has been officially released. So keep an eye out for that showing up. Now, I'm going to be testing this out on the new Fedora 39 beta, which utilizes the GNOME 45 beta. However, after performing a system update on that, it would appear I have the final release. I don't know. It might still say beta. We'll have a look at the desktop settings when we get into there. So this version of GNOME brings with it a lot of different changes to it. And a lot of it's just improvements for how GNOME regularly is. Uh, but it is becoming a little bit more refined. They're starting to add some of the features and functionality that you would expect inside of a desktop environment into it. For that, I certainly praise the projects. Of course, we talked about uh, a couple weeks ago the problem that GNOME 45 is going to break all past extensions. And this is ultimately, it is for the better. It would have been better if the way they implemented that was to slowly roll that out, that change out, how see about if they could do some form of intermediate and then eventually force it out. But even that, most of the major extensions are already set for GNOME 45. And so I'm not sure it's going to be as big of a deal unless there's some really old legacy or very small developer base that has not yet ported it. And to my understanding, being a non-developer of either extensions or, or how the desktop environment is put together, it's not a major overhaul. It's just a change in how the implementation is. But that being said, it is still going to potentially cause some extensions to break. So if you're us utilizing some rolling distribution that might roll you onto GNOME 45, be aware of that before you install that update. Just double check all of those extensions. I did actually pull up a few lists of current extensions and found that many of the ones that I probed did actually uh, have the GNOME 45 version. So let's go ahead and start by first looking at a uh, article here. We're going to use the one from today from 9 to 5 Linux. The desktop is officially released. And uh, what they're going to do here is talk about some of the key issues. So the first major key issue here is in the fractional display. This is something that will solve a few problems for a few people out there. Um, the key features mentioned here are fractional scaling factors in display, allowing you to choose 100, 125, 150, 175, extend the date and time options, and then <clears throat> a few other things with the calendar options and things like that. Uh, Nautilus does work a little bit faster. This is going to be one pain point for me. Nautilus to me has always been the worst part of GNOME. I completely hate how the entirety from the dialog boxes of moving things, how the whole system it works. I just don't like Nautilus. So it'll be curious to see if this change brings some changes that bring a little bit more positive experience. My big experience issue is moving files between them has often been slow and then you get the little pop up there in the corner rather than you know an external dialog box it just kind of gets in your way a little bit uh, those are probably more personal choices but we'll see if uh, if Nautilus is actually working better we do have some new camera indicators very similar to the old mic indicator and they do show up with really nice colors we'll show you what that looks like uh, utilizing cheese and a webcam and then of course we have some changes in the quick settings panel. Of course, the quick settings panel changes will only occur if you have hardware that supports them. So they're smart enough with the code in the build we're doing here is on my virtual box. There's no Bluetooth on this computer, so the Bluetooth box will not show up. They also also have a new one, which is your keyboard backlighting options. We will not see that one show up because I'm doing this on a desktop. You know, this computer keyboard does not have backlighting. And so we want to go ahead and just recognize a few of these changes. We're not going to see directly here. Uh, but I just want you to be aware that uh, the changes are there on supported hardware. So we do have some more changes coming in that in that uh, quick settings option. We do have some uh, Wayland support, and uh, we have a few new touch screen or uh, like touch screen and uh, touchpad. Uh, gestures. We also have a brand new image viewer. It's much more streamlined, works a lot faster. It's called Lupe. Uh, and then we have just a few other things in the background, uh, just some things that will make all of the windows respond faster and things like that. So that is what the GNOME 45 experience brings us. Let's go ahead and 
have a look at what this is going to look like. So let's go ahead and start with the login screen here. And uh, here is our basic login. And I did not have any real issues with it. You can see our basic is GNOME on Wayland. We can drop back to X if we really want to do that. So we'll go ahead and do this. Now I will note that when we first installed uh, Fedora here in the beta, then it did not, uh, um, it didn't have all of the elements of the new the new GNOME 45 in here, but I think after the uh, updates, we actually did get them. So we'll walk through what some of those are here in just a moment. Let me just have a brief look at the system details. So here we're on GNOME version. This, this is telling us GNOME version 45 release candidate. So it does look like there may still be a few little changes from what this build is versus what the official release is, but uh, I'm pretty sure I have this figured out most of the way. The first thing that you will notice here is that the new panels, uh, the sidebar panels, do go all the way up for several of your, your base GNOME apps. So here is your Nautilus. You'll see everything does that. This carries with it some advantages and disadvantages, um, but they basically they're doing this to say it makes it look a little bit more unified, eh, makes the system look a little prettier. Okay, whatever. I'm not going to... Uh, go one way or the other about any of those. Uh, we can actually exit out of any of these pop-up windows here with the escape key. So uh, that's a nice feature that uh, we have, saves us a few extra clips. Now inside of our uh, quick settings panel here. You'll notice these are the only things relevant. Uh, if this computer had wireless, we would have the wireless option. We would also have airplane mode. Uh, with Bluetooth, we'd have that. And with keyboard backlights, we would have that as well. Uh, this tool here, I was not actually able to get working properly in the latest version uh, uh, of GNOME on Debian, but it does appear to be working just fine over here. That's your built-in screen capturing tool. Of course, um, the one thing that is apparently missing is that GNOME Display Network Stacks, which I talked about, and I said, are they really going to fix this? It looked like they opted to not include it, which I completely support because that was a bunch of nonsense. The next thing to notice uh, is look up here to the left, and you'll see that we have this new act, uh, this new switcher here. This is actually a really nice function, and uh, it did bring back to us a lot more really nice function, in which case we can quickly see now which screen we are on, and we can hover our mouse over here and roll with our scroll wheel to, in order to go to each one of the workstations. Of course, you can still use your, your mouse and things like that. But we do see a much nicer, cleaner interface with an easier idea as to where exactly we are uh, on our system. And we have this new uh, layout up here, which gives us basically a more pill view of seeing what is inside of our active windows. So overall, the system does have a lot more eye candy with it that does make it look a little bit better. Uh, the calendar is one of those things that uh, that was improved mostly instead of having to use the clunky arrows on the full calendar view you can just keep scrolling. Huge positive on this one is you're looking to uh, scroll down a little bit more. Okay found my date and then I can add my my personal calendars and there are some extra shortcuts to allow you to manage uh, your personal calendars as well. So you can see synchronizing your calendars with the F5. You can see Control Alt M will manage all your your calendars. Uh, so let's pull that up so you can kind of see what your calendars look like. We can hit and add a calendar. We can give it a color. We can open a file, or we can go to our online accounts, of course, and add something like a Nextcloud calendar and things like that. So that tool there is certainly a useful thing. Now let me go ahead and show you that new uh, icon there. Uh, as long as OBS did not steal my webcam. Okay, good, it has not. So now you can take note right up here in the upper panel, you'll see that we have the indicators indicating that something is utilizing our webcam. So you have a nice notification, and I really do like that extra color change there that really does show us that uh, uh, it gives us a, draws a little bit extra attention there. We do have a similar one for our microphone as well. Um, I don't know if I have any application on here that will utilize the mic or not. Uh, off the top of my head, I don't know of one, uh, but we do actually have the option there to, uh, we'll have the exact same thing if your microphone is being called as well. So uh, there is the nice features and functions inside of 
uh, our system here. Overall, I really think this is uh, a really good change uh, just to see what is out there and um, allowing us really to uh, just to kind of see the, uh, the various options uh, that GNOME 45 has. It is really maturing into something nice. I know this is one of those desktops that I'm not a huge fan of just because of it just doesn't jive with my specific workflow. However, it does carry with it a lot of things. In fact, I'm, I'm still mauling over it in my head. I think with this, the just this easy ability to move this window switchers might actually be a good reason for me to Think about using it on like my media PC. I don't know. I'm just, I'm still having it in my head. And I don't know. Maybe I'll just go ahead and install it on top of my current build. And you know, it's been a couple year mess anyway. Why not add more stuff? I did want to go ahead and have a look at though at some of the extensions. And being a, uh, a non GNOME user, I, and even when I am, I'm more of a purist. I'm not as inclined to utilize a lot of various extensions. Um, but just looking up some, um, just some of the extensions that are popular. I know Dash to Doc uh, is pop is a popular extension. Uh, you'll notice that a lot of these are already set for GNOME 45. I have no idea why I'm getting that popping up and down. I did not see that when uh, I was not recording. So consider that that scrolling in and out on the monitor there, an artifact of OBS. Uh, I did not see that in my initial testing. But Dash to Dock is supported by GNOME 45. Um, I did look at uh, Caffeine, if I can, that's not how to spell Caffeine. I don't know how to spell Caffeine anymore, all right. Uh, caffeine was actually not supported as of yet. So you see it's still at GNOME 44. Uh, so you will wanna double check your various extensions to see this one's depreciated, so. Certainly not going to work with that one. But go ahead and double check all of your various extensions to see which ones are supported and which ones are not supported. Uh, just to make sure that um, uh, if you, there's development stopped on that one. Here's CPU dots. This one doesn't have a shell version for 44 either, though presumably the 43 might work. With the 45, it certainly will not. Uh, just check your all of your extensions there before you push the upgrade. Uh, I was going through various lists here. I found some of these had versions, some of these did not. Uh, so there is overall my look at GNOME 45. Uh, it is looking very good. It's looking very mature. Uh, and it does work pretty quickly behind the scenes. And uh, some of the things I didn't show, of course, the, the faster responsiveness to the windows, that's some of the compositor edits and changes just made things work a little bit faster. Nautilus does search quite a lot faster. Uh, but then it, it'll do this by doing a simple search really rapidly and then giving you the extension, uh, the, the ability to extend, search everything by extension and a much more comprehensive search. So this will presumably help you find most of what you're looking for in the quick search. And then if you really need to do the more expanded one, you can go ahead and do that as well. So overall, GNOME 45 is definitely worth taking a look at if you uh, if GNOME is your thing. Uh, definitely keep an eye on those extensions. It should not be too long before most of your extensions are going to support it, but just be aware some of it are going to break. I did not see the Miracast uh, built in. Maybe I need to install the GNOME Network, um, uh, uh, what is it, Net GNOME Network Display, I think it was, in order to get that to show up. I don't know. Um, but in my testing with that, it didn't really work anyway, so I'm okay with them leaving it out. That's perfectly fine. Uh, overall, though, it is a really nice system. Um, I do like it, and we will have a brief look at uh, Fedora in a future video here as well. So thanks for watching, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux. Thank you for watching this video from Switched to Linux. This channel would not be possible without the backing of the program supporters scrolling on the screen now. You can be a supporter at Patreon at patreon.com slash t-o-m-m or at thinklifemedia.com. I also want to thank the open source community who creates such excellent software that makes producing this show possible. Please remember to support your software communities. Thank you, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.